Hi guys, is the mic on? Yep. <clears throat> Let's start <at> that frog. <laughs> How you doing? I uh, appreciate you being here. Today's video is on uh, Run DMC, which ain't rock, I know, but Aerosmith is. Uh, they initially didn't want to do the collaboration with Aerosmith on Walk This Way, thinking it was going to ruin their careers. Take a look. Um, Daryl DMC, McDaniels, of uh, Run DMC, has confirmed to People Magazine that he and his bandmates were initially resistant to the idea of being involved with Walk This Way, Aerosmith and Run DMC's legendary groundbreaking mashup that forever changed music. The original version of Walk This Way was released in 75 on Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic album. A decade later, while <clears throat> recording Run DMC's Raising Hell, producer Rick Rubin pulled out Toys in the Attic, an album Run DMC had freestyled over, and explained who Aerosmith were. Run DMC was performed this song uh, before, but only using the first five, a few seconds of the song on a loop, not knowing what the full song sounded like or even hearing the lyrics. Now, while Run DMC had no idea who Aerosmith were at the time, Rubin suggested remaking the song. Run DMC didn't want to record uh, the record to be released as a single, even after recording with Aerosmith, and was shocked when it was played all over the radio on both urban and rock stations. The remake version of Walk This Way charted higher on a Billboard 100 than the original 75 version, peaking at number four. Speaking of people, uh, McDaniel said about the uh, Walk This Way collaboration, it was at a time when nobody was branching out of their lane, so when we first did Walk This Way, the perception was everybody in hip-hop is going to hate this uh, because people are scared to do something new. He added, <clears throat> sorry, I'm having a call fit here. Uh, he added, people are scared to get uncomfortable. People are scared to work and think outside of the box because they're comfortable in that position. McDaniel said that when he, Joseph Rev. Run Simmons, and the late Jam Master Jay were first presented the idea, they didn't want to do it. Yo, that ain't hip-hop, he recalls telling Reuben. We thought it was going to ruin our careers. Our thing was, uh, ain't nobody going to like this. All the people that like hip-hop is going to be mad at us. We had no idea what everybody from Red Alert to Grand uh, Master Flash would say. Yo, that's the coolest thing, he said. We didn't know that the black people were going to love it. Back in February 2021, Jeff Edgars, the national arts reporter for the Washington Post and author of the 2019 book Walk This Way, Run DMC, Aerosmith, and a song that changed American music forever, appeared on the rock podcast Well Disguised to discuss the song and major players involved. Conversation with host Jim, uh, John Pritchard touched on not only the two bands, but also Rick Rubin, John Collender, uh, the other members of Aerosmith being left out of the production in the 1986's song Lasting Impact on American Culture. Ultimately, Edgers believed that while conventional wisdom is that Aerosmith helped run DMC break through to a larger audience, Aerosmith actually benefited more from the collaboration. Edgers remarked that he not only found Aerosmith frontman Steve Tyler to be a wonderful interview, he was struck by Tyler's loyalty to his band. He would say things to me that I thought were extremely abrasive or negative about other guys in the band. But if you said it to him, if you asked him a question that he thought was criticizing them, he would strike back at you or get angry or get defensive. People might say that he's difficult or a dictator or whatever. But look, if you go see T Steven Tyler play a solo show or you go see him with Aerosmith, few people have actually maintained their talent and ability and voice like he has sense of perfectionism and professionalism that just comes with all the other stuff. When Pritchard asked Edgars to uh, whether Rick Rubin, the famed producer of the track and founder of Def Jam Records, is overrated or underrated, he said, you hear people talk about him not doing something or him lying on the couch for a long time. The fact is, you look at the records he's produced and it's hard to deny some kind of magic quality. He also discussed the role former Aerosmith manager Tim Collins played in getting the band clean and how that contributed to the band later firing him. At a certain point, the same things that made the effective, uh, the same kinds of controls and 12-step philosophies, made the guys in Aerosmith, who were grown men, feel like they were being controlled, he said. <clears throat> I'll disagree on a few things. Uh, it did help Aerosmith. I mean, the, 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 the song charted big, but uh, I think Aerosmith needed no help. I think Aerosmith, Aerosmith helped run DMC's career a little bit. Uh, and it's kind of funny to me because I thought when reading this, uh, 
they never heard of Aerosmith. But then again, a lot of guys, you know, that are in the country music, which I am, but I'm in all, I mean, everything. Uh, but people who are strictly into country music, not, I mean, real country music, not nowadays, but country music, they wouldn't have known who Aerosmith was. So that kind of, well, maybe that's true then. But uh, the idea that they helped Aerosmith, Aerosmith has been around for a long time, man, and they, sorry, don't buy that. Uh, and as far as it changing music for uh, forever, too, that's not a thing to celebrate, if you guess me. <laughs> Ain't no more rock and roll. Anyway, that's all I have for you. What do you guys think? Please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. It's on MASH. It's on McLean Stevenson, who played uh, Henry Blake. It's a pretty, pretty silly one. It's, you might enjoy it. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please like this video. Please share them out if you don't mind. Hope you had a great weekend, and I hope you have a great Monday. God bless. Praying for you.